And if it goes on long enough, it moves from concern to emergency. So, final ending, all of this, think about if you are in relationship with someone who is emotionally unavailable, someone who is emotionally guarded, either out of intention, you know, to be a jerk about it, uh, or just completely clueless, never really had emotional interaction, you know, to even understand what we're talking about. However it comes about, if you are with someone and or you yourself are emotionally frozen and or not offering emotional engagement, it is going to activate and trigger the other person's nervous system. And the degree to which this was a wounding in their past history or the degree to which this is an unresolved wounding that needs attention will speak to the degree of how much ongoing distress this is creating. For a person who didn't have, uh, uh, who wasn't ignored emotionally and, and did not have a history in their family of this uh, scenario where, where others were emotionally available, that when this happens as an adult, it's not going to activate and trigger in the sense that there's a, as much of a great emergency. The person who has never had, or who really didn't have this that much, will be able to adapt and respond and say, well, thanks, but no thanks. This is not the kind of relationship for me because you're not even emotionally here. You know, you're, you're, you keep checking out. But if you have a history where you have been trained to tolerate other people emotionally checking out, it means you're going to put yourself in a situation where your nervous system is going to keep getting provoked. You're going to feel it in your body. You're going to feel this attachment to stress, but you're going to override it by saying that this is just normal. This is what people do. This is what you have to put up with. You've put up with it all these years for now. Why not just keep putting up with it here? And I am pointing out, this is how we live in chronic distress around our emotional attachment needs not getting met. So if you want to explain to a partner, what do I mean when I'm talking about connection? What do I mean when I say, let's really pay attention to the minute interactions of how we can pay attention to the invitations to see each other, to know each other, and to, to respond through mirroring, through attunement, uh, to enter the rhythm, and to be in harmony with each other. That video of the child with the mom, when they're engaging, they are in harmony. They are attuned. Are you here for me? I'm here for you. Are you listening? I'm listening. Are you, uh, do you care about me? I care, of course I care about you. Do you care about me? Yes, I care about you too. Are you here? I'm here. Are you here? Yeah. Are we laughing? That's funny. That is funny. I enjoy this laughter. I enjoy connecting. I enjoy you too. And this is going on, be it verbal, be it nonverbal, be it through behavior, whatever. And when people do not do this, as human beings, our nervous system lights up like a Christmas tree and there is a, the same way my dog after five seconds will start barking at me and say, hey, don't check out on me. I need you. If, you know, I, if we're going to be in a relationship, you got to stay available and be present. That